On this episode of the Real Life Caddy Podcast, I'm joined by fellow caddy Mike Zabo and one of Zabo's long-term regulars, Thomas Howell. Thomas is a golf coach with Golf Tech in Scottsdale, and in a 20-year career he has taught tens of thousands of golf lessons. We pick Thomas's brains about the job of being a golf coach, and he in turn shares some great advice for all of you listeners. As always, we discuss what's been happening in our own lives in our caddy stories. Zabo and I finally got on the course and played a match, and we give a brief account of our AT&T. The big question in everyone's lips is whether Zabo is out of his Chipotle coma. At the end of the episode, we all answer some listener mailbag questions, and we give out our notable mentions. If you have any questions or comments, please send them in on social media or via email, podcast at glorifieddonkey.com. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Episode 105 of the Real Life Carry Podcast. And this one is called Chopping It. Myself and Zabo. We're here. We're here. It's good to be here with a special guest this week. Special guest, Thomas Hull. Welcome, Thomas. Thank you, boys. Glad to be here. I've known Thomas for uh, many years now. We're better half of a decade I've known Thomas. I've caddied for him for a long time, so it's uh, great to have him here on the podcast. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Round of applause. Round of applause. Round of applause. You deserve it. You deserve Big G it. has a new toy, so we have to play with it. That's so, a warm absolutely. welcome, boys. I yes. do appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, glad to be here. Glad to uh, spend another week with you here in uh, the beautiful part of the country. Yeah. It is. Now, Zabo, you've worked for Thomas for how long, you said? About a decade. This, yeah, this is, I think, year nine. Year nine. Wow. Yeah, I've known him for a long time. Before I was married, before I had a kid, before I even met my wife. Uh-huh. You know? Wow. Yeah. And did you meet in Grinder? <laughs> that, I don't think it existed back that then. That was actually no. a funny story we ended up meeting, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Tell so us. So it was my first year playing the uh, the Prime event up here. Yeah. And uh, we'd requested, our first round was on Pebble, so we requested four walking caddies. And uh, I sacked my guy on the on the third hole. Oh, yeah. So I was one of those guys that uh, I I just refinished a an old Platinum Cameron that I had, like, out of my own pocket, put some money into it, right? Mm-hmm. And I, the guy says, hey, anything that's special I need to know? I'm like, no, nah, man, just having a great time today. No big deal, no worries, no nothing. Just keep the cover on the putter. I just put some money into it. Just had to mm-hmm. refinish, right? So I was that guy. Third hole, he, he, he kind of, he was annoyed by it, you know. He was annoyed by that. Yeah. Whatever. Third hole, he goes back to the to the uh, to the cart, and I just missed like a seven-foot for birdie shocker. And he takes the putter and he just Boom, he slams it down Ooh, the back. Oh, without the cover. Right on, right on the fore, and I walk over there, grab it. It's got a ding in the top. I goes, have that cover? He goes, yeah, here you go. He goes, you're done. Bye. Bye. I think I, yeah, and then, then you you And you I, went and to to the, the I went and talked and, to the yeah. caddy master and said, hey, this is what's up. Here's the nick of my putter. They were kind of embarrassed by it, and they said, uh, well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Hall, we'll, we'll make up for it. We'll, we'll get you a good guy. Tomorrow. And for some reason, I know. I know they sent me this, this little ginger <laughs> from Rhode Island. Why did they send me, G? I mean, that's shocking. But, uh, but yeah, we hooked up, and uh, we hit it off right, off right off the get-go. Great green reader. I actually uh, putted uh-huh. better than average uh, the rest of that event, and uh, mm-hmm. been, uh, about 10 years now. Fantastic. Someone asked me last week about the whole, do you mind if I ask you to leave the head cover on? I said, honestly, drivers and putters, I would prefer to leave them on. Oh, for sure. 100%. Yeah. 100%. These Those are, are investments. Yeah. They are. They're huge. And it's, there's no reason why, like for my own stuff, who cares? Mm-hmm. And you can care. gauge the player. Like I know Thomas is, and, and it's no offense to you, but you are, sen- even to this day, you're sensitive about your, you You don't put your putter back in the bag until the cover's on it. That's and correct. you hand it to me, and he's looking at me, waiting for Always. me to uh-huh. see me put the putter cover. And I get it. I appreciate that. You know, when you, you get a piece of equipment you really like and you really appreciate it, yeah, and you, you want to take, take care of it. it yeah. You know, and I've been. Uh, as long as you don't have iron covers, we're all good. You know, putter co- putters and drivers, I mean, but yeah. So when you were out here last year, you had talked to us about coming on. Tell us about about yourself and why you're going to be an interesting guest for our listeners. I'm not sure I can be that interesting at all. But <laughs> uh, but uh, so uh, uh, my career is in the golf industry. I started working in the golf industry when I was 12, and uh, I've been uh, I've been coaching the game and teaching the game, full swing, short game, yada yada, uh, since I, my first lessons. I started when I was 17. Yeah. So I've been teaching the majority of my life. Uh, I work for an amazing company called Golf Tech. Uh, world leaders in golf instruction. 
We got a uh, two hundred and two hundred plus locations in North America, and uh, and we're abroad. We just signed uh, master agreement, master franchise agreement in Dubai. Wow, uh, South Africa as well. Dang. We're in uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Japan. Uh, we're you know, we're growing rapidly, and I've been with the company for I just started my sixteenth year That's with Golf crazy. Tech. Sixteen years uh, with Golf Tech. I'm around twenty three thousand lessons taught with Golf Tech. Interesting, and over conservatively over. Right around 40,000 for my life. Cool. So that's your unique selling point for this episode is once we get to the meat and gravy of the episode, we will be asking you a bunch of questions about what you do, instructing. Well, as well as the standard questions we ask. The standard questions. Sure. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. However, know what's coming. you are a podcast listener. How does every podcast episode start? Usually with how many hole in ones I have. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That, come to, come. To, we got to talk about this because... Ladies and gentlemen, Zabo did it again. He did. He did. I had another one, and oddly enough, <laughs> <laughs> so this is funny because we were at this the same little par three golf course, and Thomas was actually out there with with the rest of the crew for the week, and he uh, he was trying to get on, and the guy in the pro shop was like, "No, we don't have any time. We can, we can throw him under the bus all day yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, I don't like he, him. Yeah, he wasn't a big fan. But uh, then I walk in there, I'm like, "Can I get out?" He's like, "Oh yeah, you're just by yourself. Yeah, go right behind me. Play. Walks in right Walk behind right. me." And they put Zabo out, and I walk right back in. I'm like, "What's up?" He's like, "Oh, he's a single." I'm like, "I, I don't care." How, did, how does that change anything? How, it's an open teeth. Let's go. Nope, nope, nope. He was an absolute tool about yeah. it. I won't throw his name out there yeah, just yet, yeah. but Jeff. he was an absolute tool. So, anyways, I came to the fifth hole, and it happened again. The, the last time was on the fourth hole. This time it was the fifth hole. But what was the yardage? What do you think was the yardage? That's forty eight yards. On the nose, 48 12, 12 yards. yards. Don't lie. <laughs> I got my number, bro. I made another yeah. one, 48 yards. I got Thomas, number four and number five. Thomas, mm-hmm. you're very familiar mm-hmm. with the nine-hole course he's talking about. <laughs> I am. Does it count? Like, if, you, if, if you're going out to practice every day on the same little track, they're all par threes, Right. nothing's over 100 yards, right? right. Does that, can you walk true. around with your, your, your chest puffed out? So, I, I'm not going to be a puffing about it, uh, but I'll tell you, I... I how many hole ones do I have? Zero. How many times have I hold on our par three course? A few. Yes. C- thank you. Thank you. You don't have any hole in ones. Join the club. Mm-hmm. Sounds mm-hmm. like you have a couple par three course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't count those. Not an official round. So Zabo walked to work the other day and he had a. He you no, know, you text me in the morning. And he says oh, it happened again, and I was I thought I don't know what he's even talking about. Uh, he was he's out practicing every day in the same place. It's like big deal. It went in again, another hole in one, yeah. 48 yards. I know you, my yard numbers. You were good at pitching it in, I'll tell you that. <laughs> we, we, we called this episode Chopping It. Now, there's a good reason why we called it Chopping It because on the last episode, oh, I actually need to touch on this because on episode 104, I did promise it says we will have a new theme tune. Oh, oh that's right. Have it? Failure, failure. Oh, well, no, epic not failure. for this episode. Not for this one. No, it's going to be for 106. Okay. Because I, I, this weekend, we'll get on that. I've. Followed up with a guy, we will have something. Okay. Don't worry about that. However, on the last episode, we said we would be playing golf with Thomas, which we did at the wee course. We did. Yes. Yes, this was actually my whole almost was the day after our match because we said the match was going to happen on the 14th Valentine's Day. It, it happened. G and I played a game of golf against yeah. each other at the at the wee course. At the wee course. It and was the most infamous pillow fight I've ever been a part of in my life. <laughs> it was the four of us. It was Cody as well. It was. Thomas oh, myself. poor Cody. Cody, if you're listening, God love you, brother. Uh, you we're, gonna about, we're about to throw you under the bus, Cody, big uh, time. Get yeah. ready. Thomas got all of his dung for the week out. Oh, I did. Oh, I, did. I dumped it all over the place. It was well, we I got, broke 90, though. I was, we did. We all broke 90, other than yeah. Cody. I mean, Cody did not break 90. <laughs> did Cody break 120? <laughs> no, he, he didn't break 100, but he was he was right about 100. But anyways, it was, I mean, it was brutal conditions. It was freezing cold, and the wind was blowing. What do you think? 30, 40 at 40, times. 40, yeah. yeah, it was a steady 25. It, it was, was gusting brutal. hard. So, I mean, it was a hard fought match. And, uh, hard fought. It, it was, was hard shocking. fought, all right. Yeah, Mother Nature won. Mother Z- Nature did Zabo win. Zabo did win, I'll give you that. Oh, he, he won, did. He won one up. He uh, did. Win, win up. He shot 98, I shot 99. No, not true. It was not absolutely true. abysmal. However, it did lead us to the thought, you know what? This is not a fair representation of a decent match. What we will do... Whoa, 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 whoa. Who said that? Well, I said that. <laughs> a, win he lost. a win is a win. Yes, you exactly. Understand? This is the same principle he said when, whenever I bring up Tiger Woods winning the 2019 Masters. He's like, well, he didn't win the tournament. Everybody else lost it. He I, didn't lost win it. it. Yeah, I lost it. Yeah, I lost yeah. the event. I, I, I handed it to you. <laughs> you know how many times Jack Nicklaus won a major because everybody else lost it? Exactly. About five of them. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, five. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Hey, you agree then? <laughs> 
It was handed to him. A we win had a match. Is a win. A match is a win. And I won. Well, in the next in the next couple of months, anyway, we have the, the voice. This is the voice of somebody that was in Phoenix at the waste management for a week. Okay, so I here was come coming the off the excuses. back of that. Here come that, the excuses. Here it's we not go. An excuse, no, but here we go. Here we go. Well, the oddest thing about him being down in Phoenix for the week is that he was less than a mile from my home, and I never saw him. Didn't even say hello. Wow. This well, guy. I know. I know. Shocking. He was doing other things. Oh, we were busy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very <laughs> busy. We were very, very, very busy getting into I wanted it. to show off my new digs, got a new office, got a new, <laughs> no, new build you out. You, you, you were actually, so you live in Phoenix. Uh, Scottsdale. Scottsdale. That's right. And the tournament was there last week. Have you been before? I've never been to the event. You've never actually been? No. I have no interest. You have no interest whatsoever. No, no. When when three hundred plus thousand extra people invade your home for a week, you don't want to. You want to avoid them. It's a madhouse. You said something about your condo up, um, place. You know, what happened? Oh, whoa, oh, God! So, <laughs> come to find out, the uh, the complex VRBO'd a bunch of units, uh, which pisses us residents off. Something fierce, right? So, uh, the pool ended up having to get drained. Ooh. So all these Had yahoos a couple coming of floaters. in from out of town, <laughs> and they just destroyed the place. Wow! Uh, getting in and out of the hot tub and floaties and this, that, and the other thing. There's <laughs> beer cans everywhere, mm. uh, paraphernalia everywhere. Typical uh, waste management. It just it was just a, it was the shit show in Scottsdale, right? And it brings that element into town, and that's unfortunate. And it's you know it is what it is. It also that event also brings millions and millions and millions of dollars of revenue and, char- and a lot of charity revenue as well. Mm. So. You know, if you look at it from a bigger picture, it's like, oh, no big deal. But damn it, that's my home, and they, you know, yeah, they ruined it. They absolutely trashed it. I'll be honest with you. I stayed um, at my pal uh, Jim's, Jim mm-hmm. Hughes. Yep. Uh, hats off, Jimmy again. He put me up for the week, and I was very respectful of his place. Yeah, as you should be. You didn't piss any flower pots, did you? That he remembers. That I remember. Yeah, no. yeah that he remembers. No. Yeah. I, 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 pr- I use the sink as long as there's no dishes <laughs> in the sink. <laughs> you know, I, uh, no, I remember I, that episode when you were in France. I remember that. Yes. Yeah. Do we you? all do. We all do. <laughs> do you? <laughs> yeah, true. I, I'd forgotten about that. Being out at the tournament, I went on the Friday. I never saw one golf shot. I was at sixteen the whole time. I didn't see one golf shot. Seriously, it's, you didn't watch any of it. This is this is this is where I feel as if the PGA Tour. That I don't know. They've lost the plot. It's completely. It's not. It's not a golf tournament. Well, that, it's a that, joke. That's that, a spectacle. That event is that an is. absolute spectacle. Yeah, the fact they have that they, like the largest gallery in all of golf. Yeah, the whole year they do, and it, it's 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 a spectacle for the sake of being a spectacle. But then to also make it an elevated event, so you're you're bringing bigger names in there. You know, it's not going to get smaller. I mean, if you keep if you keep making an elevated event, oh, you keep best bringing, players will be there every year. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. So I have an understanding of the big money events that they are going to rotate them. That would be that'd be good. Yeah, so especially for the cities that get to host them, that'd be really good. We had the AT and T, and which is, in my opinion, become pretty much a third tier event. Right. And one of the caddies and in in, for one of the pros said that next year they reckon it will be an elevated event. So yes, I've heard that yeah. too. Did you have a fun at the AT and T's, Abo? I did, I had a blast. I yeah. did. It was a lot of fun. Did I always have fun. I didn't do one practice round. I didn't go to the range once. Went to the golf course for our tournament rounds and went home after it was great and you went to chipotle about 42 times oh i got some chipotle i got some chipotle yeah people think that we should get sponsored by chipotle because i think the number you should too i hear it in every episode well i mean i i'm not a huge fan of chipotle to be honest i'm just gonna eat it because it's I'll there tell you, i'll tell you what you, you certainly <laughs> didn't look like you weren't a fan <laughs> i mean i'll eat it i mean it's there and it's free of course i'm gonna eat breakfast, it. breakfast lunch and dinner how did the tournament go for you Mm. We had, we had a delay in the Saturday. Yeah, you know, honestly, I was we didn't play well, which was fine. I mean, he doesn't really care about how well he plays, believe it or not. Even though he's won it a couple of times, that's Larry Fitzgerald. But he was in bad form this year. He was playing such a name dropper. Well, I, know. I mean, that's who I caddy for. He's a, he he was Ooh, not. Who pl- caddy for? Oh, who I caddy for? <laughs> me and Larry with wins. You asked with wins. You asked me about the tournament, how it went. Oh, I asked you, you how the tournament went. We never asked you who you worked for. Well. I'm giving you all the details. <laughs> so, I, who is she? I've never heard of her. Yeah, she played. She played football for a while. Okay. <laughs> did had a pretty decent career. Yeah, not too bad. But anyways, yeah. I mean, Streelman, always our pro. He uh, he played mediocre. Ended up making the cut, but there it turned out to be a shortened event for the amateurs because there ended up being no cut for the amateurs because the weather was just garbage and they canceled the the final round for the amateurs. And Aaron Rodgers ran away with it when his pro missed the cut by like two or three shots. It was. Pretty pitiful, if you ask me. The reason it was delayed was of because of one hole 
on Monterey Peninsula. And one golfer named Justin, Justin Rose. Rose. No, yeah. Justin Rose. You refused yeah. to hit the putt. But in his but in his defense, that was a genius move because he still had nine holes to play. He finished that one hole and then he still had nine holes to play. He played those the wind was blowing like 40, 45. Oh, and, and I didn't yeah. Know about that. Well, certainly blowing thirty and gust into forty, forty five. He didn't hit the putt. He came back the next morning, ended hold up shooting putt. like three or four yeah, hold the putt and then ended up shooting three or four under on the back nine and then won the tournament. So I mean, it was a it was a jerk move, but he ended up winning the tournament. Well, it's because interesting because the day before the weather was just as bad. Indeed, and the, I watched a guy three putt from eighteen inches. He hit an eighteen inch putt, and it went to twenty feet. Yeah, we oh, finished, right. and aggressive. we we finished on the same hole that Justin Rose refused to hit that putt on, and they were watering the green in between yeah. in between groups just to make that the the putts what, stop. What green there. was that? It was the ninth green at Monterey Peninsula. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. It was, uh, it was an brutal. absurd pin. It was an absurd pin. It was brutal. Yeah, we had to go back out on the Sunday morning. So I'm already going to go. We're going to drive to Scottsdale, mm. which, as you know, is probably 10. Mm. And I got to go out and finish 11 holes. And it's kind of pointless, okay, because there is no cut. There is no right. cut. So you're playing right, right, for right. nothing. And we hit the f- we're halfway up the eighth fairway. And I turn up in shorts. You see, because it was only a th- <laughs> the wife said there's a thirty percent chance of rain. Are you sure you want to wear shorts? Oh, that Sunday morning, yeah. yeah. And I went, oh, thirty percent. I'll go with the numbers. Oh, bro. We hit the first shot, and I look out into the ocean. Hail, being, hail. Being for Scotland, I know color, right? Yeah. <laughs> Black, it, and I was like, that's hail. And sure enough, it comes in, and I'm. Everyone else has got rain gear on, umbrellas, and I'm standing there. What course were you on it? You NPCC. Were, and it, did it start on the on your first hole when they restarted first play? hole? Yeah, same oh, thing with God. us. We're we're at Spy, and it started first hole. We we're on the eighth hole, and it started or seventh hole. It started first, and we only had three holes to go. Oh. It was mm. I had eleven. Nobody and had rain gear. It was bad. I'm watching. I'm watching the hailstones bouncing off the ground, and I can feel them against the back of my legs. And I thought, you know what they're going to do? They're going to have to have another delay. To get the hailstones yeah, off yeah, the green, yeah. Yeah. Uh, luckily they didn't, and it, the sun came out, and it was ended up being a really good move. However, uh, great, I loved it, and the pros were were really nice lads. The boy Callum Terran. oh yeah, Callum Terran. Callum Terran. <laughs> Callum, <laughs> Callum, Callum oh, yeah. is a really cool lad uh, from England. We had a great laugh, and I actually saw him, and no, I didn't see him in Scottsdale. I saw his caddy. Oh, and nice. As soon actually, the first person I, I saw when we arrived at the tournament on Monday was his caddy. How did uh, how did your pros play? Uh, Callum made the cut, and I have no idea about the other guy. Uh, our our guy missed it. He missed it by one. Some Canadian lad. Nice enough, but uh, been and gone for another year. Then obviously the the waste management. What a what a fantastic week I had out there. Uh, had, was hosted, taken care of. Number played golf. Broke, broke uh, ninety three <laughs> times. I, was, I, I couldn't believe the difference. How how bad my golf was and. On Tuesday, compared to last week, absolutely you horrendous. Got all your gates. Yeah, the Tuesday pressure of playing Zabo. Uh, it was the match. pressure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday was rough. <laughs> Tuesday was rough, it but was rough. number of ways. Rough. I'm just glad to get out of the way. Yeah, I kept begging the boys that brought up here this week. I begged them to come up a day early and get acclimated. So they decided to get acclimated the first round of the event. <laughs> Probably the wrong week to ask you, but what do you think about pro amps? <laughs> <laughs> so depends who the group is. Yeah, well, the, you're absolutely right. I mean, I played a number of pro ams. Uh, I've played a lot of pro-ams, and when you can pick your own group, they're fantastic for the most part, right? But then there's always that wild card of, you know, you're like, coming up here, right? Come up here for a week. Yeah. Come up here with three guys this week. Uh, great guys. Uh, then we got one wild card, and you don't really know until you get them removed from their <laughs> homes, right? Yeah. So you take, a, you take a bunch of middle-aged men, you, you get them away from home, hundreds and hundreds, if not thousand miles away from home, and you plop them down in a resort that you can't leave. Oh, yeah. You see behavior change real freaking quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they get away from the wolves and look hell. out. Yeah, I mean, my God, I, d- I haven't seen somebody eat so many gummies in my life in one oh, setting. Bro, we're I, getting, know, I know who you're talking about. Because, so do I. So do oh, I. On, on day one of this little oh, the line playing. of the week. Yeah. Yeah. Oh we my gonna, God. Yeah. You want to? You want to set it up? Well, I'm carrying for him, and he has probably had about 16 drinks at least. At least yes. the guy he's walking sideways. He's like walking down the fairway and he's not going in a straight line. His legs are barely moving and they're drifting off side by side. It was uh and then uh, we get to the 70. Well, he's play- I'll tell you how much he had to drink, right? <laughs> yeah. He was playing music and it got into Miley Cyrus. 
And he's just <laughs> jamming <laughs> out. Yeah. There you go. So he's jamming out Miley Cyrus. Party we, in the USA, baby. We get to 17T. <laughs> I never. I don't think I heard him. Maybe I heard him. Say uh, it. You heard him. Say I heard. It. It. I said right away. He goes, "Thomas, where are the gummies?" I'm like, "Look at him." I'm like, "Bro, the last thing you need right now is a gummy. Like, we're on the 17th hole. We're almost finished, and now you want to break into the gummies? Like, why don't you go take a nap after this and settle down before dinner?" Well, <laughs> they're in his bag, by the way. He has them. <laughs> I don't got them. We teed off at half nine yesterday morning, so we get finished for about half two. And on, on the 17th, I said to him, "I said." Uh, so what are the plans for the rest of the day? <laughs> and he looked at me and it, he says, well, I'm about ready for, and I thought he was going to say a nap. <laughs> he goes, well, I'm about ready for going to the bar and getting all wasted now. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Well, Bro, this he is, guy. He's an animal. He, he is, is uh, an animal. It's full speed. It's He's got two speeds, uh, 100% and asleep. So the day That's after, he's too, he's, he's, I mean, he's. 16 drinks deep on the course. I assume he didn't stop drinking at night, right? Mm-mm. He kept on going. This was after the game. Oh, he's drinking coffee at 8.30 last night. We tee off reasonably early the following day. I mean, it's like 9 o'clock in the morning, and I see him, and he's got, you know, double bloody ready to go. I'm like, that a baby. Let's get after it. We, we left the hotel. We left in this morning uh, at uh, 5.40, and uh, he was less than pleased about being up that early. Oh, I bet. I don't think I he bet. said a word for the first 35, he 40 minutes. He was grumpy early. Yeah. And then he, and the first thing he says at the breakfast table is, give me a Bloody Mary. There you yeah. go. Well, for, for his friends, because he, he will be a listener, his name is JB, and he's from uh, Arizona. We, we love you, JB. Yeah, we uh, love you. He's everyone. an animal. We love JB. He's we love animal. your style. I love it. Zabo sacked someone today. Oh, oh uh, he did. Yeah, so we were on our way. You know, he texted me early in the week, and this is this guy... I just, we didn't hit it off the, the first couple times I caddied for him. And, uh, yeah, no, no, text- I'd tell the truth. You thought he was an asshole. He was. He kind of berated me. And he, uh, he texted me earlier in the week and he was like, hey, you know, playing on Friday, you know, late in the afternoon, if you can caddy. Well, I got to find out my tee times for this tournament that I'm caddying for Thomas. Got to check your calendar. Got to check the calendar. And it turns out that we weren't playing early enough. So I had to, uh, bail on him. So we were in 16 green on the big course about a year ago. And this guy's going down three, and Zabo points. You see that? Oh, I remember yeah. that story. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I remember I'm like, that. we're going to walk by him, and he's going to look at me, and he's going to be like, "Hey, Zabo, you're my best friend." I'm like, "This guy was, yeah," and he did. He's like, "Bro, big <laughs> hugs and stuff." And then, so we come off the course today, and Zabo says, "I'm not going up to the top. No, I, went, huh? I don't want to go by the first tee. I can't." That's what do he it. said. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, "Hey, drop me off the top of the hill up here. I got to, I got to go." I'm like, "Where are you going?" He's like, I, "I'm trying to avoid somebody." I'm like, "All right, no worries." I just don't. I don't like. I don't. No, like you can't walking look. on eggshells out there and getting berated. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not into that. That's not fun. No, it's no. not part of the job. We, when I was in Scottsdale last week, we played a, a course called Wigwam. Do you know it? Yeah, I've heard of it. So, de- really good track. And I started with an eagle on the par five. I don't uh, know. You call bullshit on that. Blue or black <laughs> or orange course or something. Driver seven iron hold the putt, and the boys like okay. You know, it was a bunch of old farmers, like old school farmers. And then it all would just fell apart. The front nine was horrendous. I think I was about 45 in the front. Woo! But on the second hole, I bombed the driver, and then I shanked. Oh, no. Yeah, I, sh- I shanked a six iron across, and I hit this guy in the buttocks. You hit a dude? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No. I shouted four, and oh, went no. through the carts, and actually bounced. And when I got up there, the guy was called Bruno, and he was from South Philly. You know, he was there for the... Super Bowl. Wow, did you give him a real life caddy podcast card? I, oh, I did. I did. And But I hit him right in the buttocks. Did he take it like a man? <laughs> no. Nah, he's, he's a Philly guy, isn't he? Oh, oh, my, oh my buttocks. My bottom <laughs> cheek. Oh, so, that's, bottom. that's where I get my power from. What we'll do is we'll, we'll take a wee break and then we'll crack on and speak more to Thomas about being a golf instructor. Four. Most listeners to this podcast will be golfers. Most golfers at some point in their career have had a lesson. Thomas, you are a golf instructor. How did you get into it? Organically, I, guess, I suppose. I started caddying when I was 12. You did? Yeah. Oh. That's how I got in, in and around the game. Was uh, my, my grandfather was a big golfer, and I really wasn't interested in golf early on. It was basketball was my first love, then baseball and football in that order. Uh, threw some wrestling in there and some other stuff in there as well. And I started caddying at 12 um, for money, quite frankly, just to have a job, to have some income. Um I lied about my age, supposed to be 13. I lied I was 12. I looked like I was 9, so it didn't really matter. But, yeah, I started looping, and it was great. And I fell in love with the game. I liked the respect around it. I liked that you could compete in really nice clothing. 
That was nice. Uh, I like that uh, nobody was trying to beat the living hell out of you, uh, like they do in basketball and football, especially in Flint, Michigan, where I'm where I'm from. Yeah, you get to re- wear really nice clothes and, uh, and and play a sport and compete, and everybody was kind of, for the most part, really respectful for one another, and I liked it. I liked the country club lifestyle. That was pretty cool. So you kind of did a country club then? Kind of a private club, yep. And uh, and I kind of grew up the ranks there, took over as caddy master when I was 18, and then kind of worked my way on up, and assistant pro, and yada, yada. And I've kind of gotten to the instruction side, and in the era that I, I came up, if you were going to make money as a golf pro, you were going to be a head professional private club and own the pro shop and maybe some of the carts. Or you were going to teach a lot, and uh, I found an, a niche, my niche, so to speak, in coaching, communicating. So uh, I went down that route, and uh, yeah, I've been doing it for a long time. I've been a, I've been a head professional, director of instruction. Um, only positions I haven't held are general manager, and that's probably about it in the golf golf business. What about golf tech? What's the crack with that? Yeah, so fact based coaching personalized uh, one-on-one coaching. So essentially there's no methodology that we really, we really take. We take data. We just take data and we apply it to, to coaching, right? right. You're going to get different messaging from based on personalities and whatnot, but mm-hmm. the, the approach is always fact-based. So essentially we start off with a interview process and analysis. Uh, it's called the swing evaluation. And we start that process off just getting to know the golfer and understand who they are and what their goals are, what their frustrations are. And uh, and then my job as a coach is to help them better understand the root cause of their frustrations. And then from there to tailor a step-by-step uh, game plan uh, that's literally tailored to who they are and what their respective goals are. So somebody comes to me and you know they just want to work on their driver. Okay, great. We'll talk about your driver. Somebody comes to me as an absolute beginner golfer and they want to they want to practice a couple times a week. And great. So uh, it's fantastic. So we use video, uh, motion measurement technology, which is all proprietary. We've got over... I want to say four terabytes of, of golf swing data from PGA Tour all the way down to your your absolute hacks, which, mm-hmm. good Lord, do we see a lot of hacks. <laughs> <laughs> your bread but, and butter, uh, probably, Absolutely, right? yeah. absolutely. And we love we love you hacks, for sure. Uh, but essentially, we just we just take data. You know, why does a ball do what it does? The face angle starts it, right? And then the path relative to the face creates curvature. Uh, and then we just work off of, work off the of laws of physics. Uh, we we. You know, reverse engineer that back in order. What is the golf swing? What are you doing with your golf swing? What do you do well? We measure the swing, uh, hip movement, shoulder movement, elbow movement, wrist movement, knee movement. Measure the whole thing. We compare that data to what we know to be good by tour standards. And we help move our golfers into the best physical positions they could possibly be in throughout the course of the swing and help them play better golf. When you started coaching, though, did you do it? differently to that oh god yeah i wish i could give back the first four or five thousand golf lessons I ever taught in my life really oh absolutely they were they're absolute trash oh, <laughs> oh seriously they were I, I i was i was a very athletic young man and i i taught what i felt i was doing right and most coaches do quite frankly if you're if you're going to be a when you come up in, in the coaching ranks you're either going to teach what you think you know how to do or you're going to copy something from somebody else and you're going to regurgitate it that's what you do right and there was a ton of that in the 80s and 90s and I taught what I thought I was doing from an athletic standpoint. And sometimes it connected with people and sometimes it didn't. But then I, then I started educating, getting an education on why does a ball do what it does? And how does, how does the club and, and ball interact? And then what are the biomechanics behind that? I was like, man, I had no absolute clue what I was even talking about. <laughs> you know, and I, so I, I feel bad for little Jimmy and Johnny back in the, Really nice. Well, if little Jimmy and Johnny are listening right now in Flint, Michigan, if you want your money back, that sounded like a refund. Yeah. <laughs> or just come to come to Scottsdale. Thomas yeah. is come on uh, out. I'll give you his game. Yeah. I'll give you. I'll give you a twenty dollars lesson again. No problem. Exactly. You <laughs> you sent me a video of your new office last week. Yeah, really proud of that. And it looks tremendous. Yeah, thank you. Really proud of that. Uh, so full on projectors, full simulators. Uh, we have a six bay facility, about uh, about five and a half thousand square feet. Um, Six uh, six training bays, uh, full simulator. So you're hitting right into a, a simulator screen, dual video cameras, motion measurement technology, uh, fitting guys, technology. Who do you guys awesome. use? Do you guys use TrackMan Foresight? In, indoor, we're Foresight. Yeah, foresight. For, foresight indoors for sure. Yeah. So uh, we all the technology we use, we use in the bays in our training bays is proprietary, with the exception of Foresight. Uh, we worked with Foresight to write some software. Our, our engineers wrote a, wrote a program to, to allow our teaching software to communicate with uh, Foresight software, and so you're getting video, uh, you're getting ball flight, and you're getting motion measurement technology, all gotcha. in two seconds. Wow. Impressive. It's nice. it it really is amazing. It's it's outstanding stuff. Now a lot of beginners or real hacks that we caddy for, they always say, "Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry." Do you feel you'll probably get the same? 
Oh yeah, absolutely. But nothing, nothing phases you guys. Well, things phase us for sure. But, uh, but yeah, a lot of times, like my really dedicated students, when they they won't they don't feel like they'll practice enough and they're truly invested in the process, they'll oh, sorry, coach, I didn't have enough. You know, they they don't want to disappoint me, right? They don't want to come in, in into the bay and or or when we're going outside and they don't want to disappoint because you know I put a lot into. I care. I generally care. I love what I do. Yeah, they don't want to disappoint you, and you hear it all the time. Then, then you know, but I'd say 50 50, 50% are truly engaged. The other 50% just don't care, and, you know, they're just showing up for a golf lesson to go through the motions. I, no, I can believe it. I can believe it. No, they yeah, really I do. Believe, it it, it yeah. becomes into a routine, and then, you know, a lot of those individuals you develop really nice relationships with, and it just it's just rapport, and they're showing up as part of a routine, and you're hanging out, and you might give them a, a tip or two for five minutes. Do they, you get a lot of the guys who just blame you for their, uh, their bad, like, like oh, I, I bet you not, nobody blames you. They're not going to blame me. No, they don't. They're wow. not going to blame me. Good. No, as soon as as soon as that rhetoric comes out, it's shut down immediately, and yeah. we're having a conversation about uh, accountability. <laughs> I like it. No, no, you're not going to put it on me. Wow, there's a handful of caddies who have that same mentality. There's that one caddy who always says, "Blame me, but pay me." <laughs> yeah, no, I'll. I'm very respectful about it, but as soon as you, you know, somebody wants to flip the script and, and kind of go that around, so yeah. okay, let's let, let sure. me ask you a few questions. Let's have an honest conversation about your habits, yeah. and your tendencies, and then uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're the one swinging the club, not me. That's exactly. a good point. Exactly. I would, I'd love to see someone in a restaurant go and complain to the cook, or the chef. They 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 go to the the server, yeah, or the manager. They don't go. They don't go to the guy cooking the food. Very so, true. So, like Very with true. us, people will try and blame us. Yeah, but they ain't gonna. They're not gonna. You know, there's something about the dynamic there. So, what are you saying? You saying you go to Thomas and blame Tom? Don't blame me. Go blame Thomas, your golf coach. No, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm saying like him accountability. Yeah, don't blame anyone for anything. Yeah. Take responsibility from your own. No, damn shot. if my communication style doesn't work with somebody, I need to own up and I need to recognize that and I need to suggest a coaching change. And I've done that. I've absolutely done yeah, that. You know, I if you. I just don't vibe with somebody, if my intent is always is good. It's positive. Yeah. But if I don't vibe with somebody, I'll flat out say, "Hey, let me introduce you this guy over here. I think I think your personality is a matchup. I'm a big personality. I know who I am. I yeah, get it, yeah. right. I'm I am who I am, uh, and that's not for everybody. And that's, that's fine. very true. That's that's very true. And I recognize too. That. I've I've done that myself. I said, you know, I'm not a good fit for you. You should have this guy. And I think you're actually really good setting up who you set up this year, like G, oh, yeah, G and JB. Totally, like oh, yeah. that's JB's his guy, you know yep. for and sure. Dave, Dave's working well with you as well. And yeah, yeah. Me and my guy are, are with you, and that's that's working out. So, so yeah, the dynamics nice. The interview process is that for you to either hire them or sack them? That's a them, great basically. question. Yeah, that's no, a wonderful question. So the interview process. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the interview process is really, I mean, uh, on the surface, is all about trying to find out about the student, right? But at the same time, I'm. I've been doing this a long time and based on responses, I can figure out whether I should, I should coach them or not. And I'll, I don't just coach good players. I have some really good players that I do. I have some really good players I, that I work with and I have some single digits and I've, but I have some absolute beginners. It's not about skill set for me. It's about where is your, where is your dedication, right? Are you really truly going to practice? If you're going to come to me and say, you want a few golf tips, I'm going to, I'm going to hand you off to a, to a junior coach. So they can learn, they can cut their teeth a little bit more, but yeah, no, there's definitely an interview process and in whether or not they're, you know, and I also charge a, a different rate than the rest of my, my team members as well. So, you know, for some beginner golfers, they don't need to pay that rate. They can, I can, they can cut their teeth and, you know, with one of my junior coaches. So in sure. your interview process, do you ever come up, do you ever ask them like, how far do you, how, what, what's your 150 club? Do you ask them what, what all they the think? Time. Yeah. Yeah. All and, the time. And is it usually they say eight iron when it's really like they're six it's, or five it's, iron? It's, it, it's always minus one, 1. <laughs> 1.5 always, right? Exactly. So you get them in, they, then they start hitting balls. Oh, this launch monitor is not accurate. Yeah. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually <laughs> the most accurate <laughs> launch monitor, uh, indoor launch monitor on the planet. Yeah. It's, There's uh, no uh, wind. 99.7% yeah. accuracy. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. within a degree of launch, within a few hundred RPMs yeah. of spin. It's, it's Your eight on. iron goes 138, bro. You've never yeah. hit 160 in your life. Oh, let me see you hit one. <laughs> okay, here, the six iron is going to go 185. Boom, it goes around 184. See, it's, it's fine. Yeah. You know? It was working well enough for NASA. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah. But, hey, I they guess for you. Yeah, yeah. Fun Very stuff. You get, and you get objections about coming indoors from time to time, too. A lot of people are really hesitant to come indoors for golf lessons and because we play golf outside, right? Yeah. Really some in, truly interesting data that just came out through the NGF, National Golf Foundation. We just had a big company conference uh, last week. And uh, the amount of golfers in the United States has increased exponentially. It's at 41.1 million golfers now in the United States. Wow. That's crazy. That's a lot, right? It's grown. But over 12 million of those don't play golf on a golf course on a regular basis, but they call themselves golfers. Wow. Top golf. Wow. Simulators. Oh. In, in at home experiences, you know, uh, 
you know, those indoor launch monitors have gotten extremely affordable and nice, right? So Golf Tech, over all your locations, are they all indoor facilities? Uh, we have a couple of hybrid locations that are on driving ranges. Gotcha. Right? But our bread and butter is our brick and mortar. Gotcha. That's where it's at. Yeah. It, it, in a control, it's, it's all about controlling the environment for improvement. If you're going to improve, you need real accurate feedback. In ball flight, don't get, obviously ball flight is tr- truly important, right? But you guys are caddies. You've seen thousands, if not millions, of golf swings. You know that the ball can lie. You can you can find one swing and hit in the center of the club face and hit that one good shot, and they think that they made a completely different golf swing, and they yeah. just got lucky. Just straight up lucky. For right? sure. So when we bring them into our studios, you cannot hide. We're taking dual video cameras, front view, side view, motion measurement, ball flight, all at the same time. And then you show them their swing, and they're like, oh, my God. Well, it doesn't feel like that. <laughs> hear it all the time, right? Feel versus oh, real. Yeah. yeah. And then usually, right after they see their golf swing, it's like they forget that they're indoors. They're totally engaged. They understand that now it's a learning gotcha. process, you know. Uh, it's great. Have you ever uh, come across students that you thought were absolutely hopeless that you couldn't make better like yes you, like you're just you're not athletic you have no talent there's no chance for you yes. to prove at this game yeah and absolutely. what do you do what do you do in that situation walk a line right so walk a line so uh i'll i'll often say to somebody we'll, we'll work on this until we can get you to the best of your skill set we'll find your talent ceiling gotcha where's your let's find out where your talent ceiling is uh and the man the other thing, you got to manage expectations, right? You guys oh, know this. No. Oh, my God. Manage expectations, right? So yeah. I was doing it this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. I've got a, a great young man I work with. I'll just use his first name. His first name is Jonathan. I love working with Jonathan. He's an intelligent young man. He spends a lot of money on golf. He spends a lot of time on golf. He does practice. He practices. He hits a lot of golf balls. I wouldn't call it practice. After a year of working together, I'm trying to get him on the golf course, do some playing lessons. And I'm getting him up from nine holes. And, uh, you know, he's, he hits like four greens and nine holes. And he's only been playing golf for like three years. And he's really disappointed with himself. And I'm like, yeah. so I, I'm at it. What, what is your barometer? Mm-hmm. Right? And he instantly went to tour stats. Yeah. <sighs> wow. And I, I said, bro. Easy. You, what, uh, seriously, you, you think you should hit a nine iron 155 with a tight draw every single time. Why? Well, that's what Rory does. And, yeah. You know, it turns into that kind of stuff. And, not Rory. and so we actually sat down and we went through PGA Tour statistics when this is a huge misconception out there with the world that tour pros hit every green. They all hit at 320. And no, they don't. No, they really don't. If you actually sat down and you really looked at the PGA Tour averages, now granted, we're talking about the best player in the world. They're elite. Mm-hmm. And you start looking at what the, the miss, you know, the greens and regulation, all these stats, they're not 100%, people. They're just not. You know, so when a 15 to 20 handicap thinks he should hit a green 90% of the time from 150 and they see the PGA Tour average is less than 70%, it's like, what, you know, just manage your expectations. So that's a, and that's probably true of a lot of coaching in general, but especially in golf, for some reason, this game gets so taken for granted, right? Mm -hmm. You're swinging a crooked stick on a tilted plane, trying to hit a sphere off an uneven surface. (laughs) What in the hell about that is easy? Well, no, but what, what? What is logical about that? Well, what drunken idiot ridic- came up with that? Dick, exactly. Yeah. I have never, ever met a golfer in my life that was as good as he thought he was. Ever. Never no. happens. And we've all been that guy, by the way. Yes. yes. Me, me included. Oh, yes. We've all been that guy. Everybody. I think I'm way better than oh, I Oh, Michael, remember, how, how seriously did I used to take myself on the golf course? Oh, very. And to a certain extent, still. I mean, for God's sakes, two podcasts ago, I said I had tour-level chipping, for God's sake. <laughs> 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 and you guys played with me the other day. I, think, I would think it's safe to say there's no tour-level chipping oh, going on here. That was last episode, by the way. I remember well, that was a question episode. from last episode. And I, yeah. I tell you, on Tuesday, every single time, Zabo missed a green, and he, 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 he then, like, threw up on himself. No, that's right, not true. I chip, your I short game was horrible. Ones. Your short game was horrible. How about 16? The toughest hole in the golf course that chipped to about two fit. No. One out of a no, 12 no, was no, decent. No, no. Listen to this. He's, he's we really can't claim good. anything good from that who, day. Yeah, was bad. Who won that match, G? Who won that right. match? I'm just that's asking. A good point. As just I say, asking. as I was talking, right? Don't interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he was chipping around the greens, I thought about that. Oh, I'll put my <laughs> short game up against any PGA player. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. I say some shit sometimes. True, right? <laughs> true. So yes, managing expectations isn't just about, we see it from a caddy's point of view. You're obviously dealing with it. Now tell me, what? what's the average amount of 
time that you will spend, when I mean lessons, are you three months with a person or 12 months? Two and a half years. Two and a half wow. years. So this is all big. Yeah. You come to you, golf you form kit. relationships and it'd probably be a bit longer if I hadn't bounced around so much. I'm, I'm in my fifth location now with Golf Tech. Okay. So I became a bit of a of a turnaround specialist, triage specialist. I go and put me in a broken market and then uh, build it back up and then I'll go to another market and build it up and that's what, what I do. What about is that, now? Is that the truth or is it just a bunch of unpaid decks around the country? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's some of that too. Burn bridges, baby. Yeah, right? No, but that's that's yeah. kind of how I made my name for myself in the company is uh, um, I started in the LA market on the franchise side and um, you know, it all starts with hiring and recruiting and then building a culture, right? Culture building is, is so, so key. You know, building a culture that your that your team members. I, I, you'll probably never hear me say the term employee. I, it's, it's not, it's not my shtick, right? Um, team members, building a culture that team members truly want to become a part of and main and, and stay a part of. A lot of times, that'll mean more than income. Now, granted, you got to make sure they make money, right? But building a culture of of of, of fun. Uh, integrity culture, our company values, fun, integrity, team improvement. But building that culture that is fun and you're constantly learning and you're truly engaged. I want my team members to want to come to work and want to be engaged and want to be and, and be passionate. I want to foster that. And that's, I, I take I take way more enjoyment of building those environments anymore than I do just helping somebody build a golf swing, right? I, I truly love helping my team members become the best version of them coaching selves and enjoying their careers and advancing their careers. And I, that's, that's where I, I absolutely thrive. Awesome. I, I, it's funny. I, I see the opposite. I see Zabo as like my employee <laughs> as opposed to as <laughs> was he ten ninety nine or W two there, BG? Well, and careful. Actually, this is recorded. <laughs> I, I'm waiting to get paid now, there, Mister Employer. Yeah, <laughs> pay me. What, what kind of bennies we talking yeah, here, yeah. Big G? And uh, now <laughs> moving swiftly on. Now, how many how many guys have you sacked? Like your, I don't remember students. Oh, students. Yeah, students. Oh, yeah. Um, Can't be that many. I've been with golf tech now for my 16th year and i've been teaching for you know, longer than that so how many students have i actually fired and i'm not going to work with you anymore it's been a it's been more than a couple handful i mean it's it's been a few <laughs> really is that now sometimes it's just passing them off to a different individual because i just don't my communication style doesn't work for them there's that's valid so that i would consider that part of the process but i'm just not going to work with you anymore yeah i've done that a few times i mean sometimes you just get what are the reasons for that ego okay and every f- Golf lesson. Well, well. Here's what I need to do. Oh yes, please, please tell me. <laughs> tell me what you you need. can't break a you can't break a hundred. You can't make contact with a driver. It's the largest club head in your golf bag, and you whiff. Yeah, please, by all means, tell me what you need to do for the one hundred seventeenth time, and how that's not going to work. <laughs> it's never and worked it's before, just, and it's not going to work. And now. that, and I swear to God, that individual loves being beat up on because I did not hold back. And I, I probably I worked with the guy. I think it was like 117 lessons I gave the guy. Wow. Wait, sorry. No, seriously, 117 lessons I gave that guy before I before I left the market and moved to a different market and stopped teaching him. Was he the reason you left the market? He might have been the reason <laughs> I left the market. But it was just in in in. You know, for a year, it was every every Monday morning and Friday morning. And when he first came to me, he was all pumped up and yada yada. And I was like, "Great, I love this energy. This guy's engaged, and he's 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 got the time, he's got the resources. And let's face it, if you're going to play golf, resources, money, you got to have money. Uh, and he and you know, he was engaged. So I'm like, let's do this twice a week, blah blah blah. And the front end of it, it was good. Yeah, it was good. But after about the seventh lesson, it was like, uh, oh, there he is. Uh, oh, there he colors. is. True colors. Got it. And then I took him out to a golf course, like. What in the actual hell is happening? Or this is not golf. This is not what we've been talking about. What are you doing? And then he proceeds to tell me that he's watching YouTube videos. I'm like, oh, you but Rick Shields tells me to do this. Oh, that's brilliant. And I flat out told him, I said, I'll tell you what, you just keep watching those YouTube videos and you keep paying me about five, six grand a year, no problem. Yep. Uh, it's job security for life. Yeah, exactly. Now, is that information valid? Yes. It's it's valid. There's a lot of valid information out there. But is it tailored to who you are? So out of all the thousands and thousands of, of students you've coached, give me your worst, your absolute worst student. I was a head professional in a resort in northern Michigan. And this uh, this guy was probably just a few years older than me at the time, and he just landed a, an accounting a gig in, a, in an accounting firm, big firm. And uh, so he comes up on a week-long stay and play and learn package. So I'm going to give this guy, you know, a couple hours of instruction every afternoon. I'm going to take him on the golf course and yada, yada, right? And he prepays his stuff i never seen somebody give themselves stitches playing, trying to play golf. What? Sorry? 
He took a hack out of his own left shin. Oh, what? Oh. I'm not kidding you. With a golf club? He well, I was I was driving up on the back of the range, and he had this weird, like jump move he was doing. It was just it was nuts. He was like he had this really closed <laughs> stance, and he was trying to swing into out and. <laughs> And I, I, I kind of got an idea what he was trying to do. So I, I introduced myself, yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm, and he's all pumped up, and he, and he gets this really closed stance, and he's doing this drill, and all of a sudden he just takes this downswing, and his left foot sticks in the ground, and he snaps his hands over, and he sticks the toe of the club in his left shin. What? <laughs> it was seriously, it was the most bizarre thing I'd ever seen in my That's life. Kind of impressive, really. It really, really yeah, was. Like, I had never seen anything like that in my life. And I, and he, and he, and you hear. I don't want. I want, I, I want a stick to break right now. Just yeah. Imagine a dry stick and you just, oh, and you just crack like that, right? And and you hear this crack off of his shin, and I go, <laughs> and I laugh. <laughs> yeah. And the poor son of a gun, he drops down to the ground. And he grabs his leg and rolls over. And he's freaking bleeding. I'm like, oh, this shit's real. Yeah. Wow. The dude literally cracked his freaking left leg. I, it I was I'm trying it, to imagine how you even do that. It was. I, I'm still. I saw it l- out real to time. End. And it was, but it was the most absurd. And he, and he did this. He snapped his forearms over at the. It was the most bizarre thing I'd ever seen in my life. So he, he hurt himself, and wow. so uh, he came back after he went. To the, he got medical attention. Came back to the resort, and I gave him a refund. <laughs> he was a freaking liability. Wow. I couldn't do it. Sorry, bro. I can't got, teach. You. I can't can't improve on he, that. <laughs> he can't. He beat himself up with a golf club. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> it was insane. What are the top three mistakes that amateurs make? Biggest, one of the biggest myths in golf. Keep your head down. If you want to swing slow and you want to develop long term neck injuries, by all means, keep keep your head down. It's the stupidest thing. Go look at uh, Annika, Annika Sorenstam, David Duvall, Dustin Johnson. Go watch their swings, especially their fast swings. By the time the club head is hitting the golf ball, their eyes are already down the target line. So keeping your head down, keeping your head still, that's the number one mistake. Okay. okay. Number two mistake is that take advice from twenty five handicaps. <laughs> uh, we yeah. see that every all the time. every country club has that one hack yeah. that loves to talk about the golf swing and thinks he's a genius. So number two mistake is they they take advice from non experts because they have relationships with them or rapport. So there's one and two. Keep your head down. Taking advice from people that don't know what the hell they're talking about. And then the the third one is is taking how hard golf is for granted. Right with by far not knowing how to practice well you know that we've started a little series on how to improve your game from a caddy's point of view mm. there is listen to your caddy well yeah the, but you know there's the we did what one did we do we did chip it chip, chip it, chip yeah. it. Yeah. now yeah. there is going to be one about practicing and warming yeah. up i'll maybe get, speak to you about some points there i have yeah. a, like you're totally right the stats are there 75 yeah. percent of every, regardless of your your ability is from 125 in yes 75% of You're going shots. to take the vast majority of your Definitely. strokes from 125 yards and closer to the green. Boys, we need to move on for just now. Yep. Uh, mailbag questions and notable shout-outs. Four! Before we crack on with a couple of mailbag questions and shout-outs, I have to do the usual. Usual being what? The usual. I, I always forget <laughs> this, Abel. What is it? Right. Social media. Yeah, follow us. Twitter, Instagram. YouTube. Glorified Donkey. Yeah. And if you're new to the podcast, rate, review, and please. You guys are like the only reason I even look at podcasts, social media, anyways. oh social media. Yeah, yeah. You guys listening to this podcast, I actually get me tuned back into social media. Oh no, don't don't do that. Don't do that. Just just pay don't, attention to ours. Don't let yeah, that's it. Just just one account and that's <laughs> it. Follow when I say pay attention, it. I mean open up an app. Yeah, open there up an app. app. Yeah, but yeah, you I can find a non contributor. I, I have a very minimal footprint. Yes, <laughs> you can p- find us on all the uh, the the major social network, social media. And it's Glorified Donkey. And if you're new to the podcast, please rate, review, and have a listen to the previous episodes. Now, the first mailbag question comes from a John Ramirez. And this he's in Santa Rosa Beach. And that is in? California. Probably here in California, isn't it? Florida. Santa, Santa Rosa, Rosa Beach. Beach. Oh, okay. Santa Rosa Beach. Huh? Now, hmm? he says, from a caddy's point of view, there's four players in the group. One total hack, two mid to high handicappers, and one very, very good player. Who does a caddy prefer to carry for, right? The uh, best tipper. <laughs> ah, good answer. Good answer. Not an option, Thomas, but oh, great point. Sorry. You can either go with a hack and the really good golfer or the two in the middle. What would you take? I'm torn. I'm torn. I mean, I'm it's, going two in the middle. 
Yeah. I'm going two in the middle. Yeah. The, the really good golfer might think extremely high of themselves and might not be that fun to work with. And really hack is just way too much work. It's it's tough sometimes when you got somebody you can really play in an absolute hack that's, you know, 80, 100 yards offline. And you're like, you're trying to help the good player, but also you can't forget about the bad player. It's easier to help the two well, you, mediocre you players. You kind of had that dynamic I, this. I know, Thomas. That's, that's what, what I'm getting at. <laughs> 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 it's tough. It's tough. <laughs> I do love watching caddies, though, who don't care about hacks. I genuinely, if if we get a beginner, if we can get something going, okay? Yeah, just, just something. something in the right way. Yeah, as yeah. long as they know, keep, pick up, keep up, here's your stuff. But there'll be some caddies who will just... Oh, like, they mail it in three, right away. Yeah. Three clubs and just go, here you go, and just hand yeah. them. And the, 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 this, the poor bastards over there in the woods try to find a ball they'll never find. Yeah. And, and that's... It's yeah, very really, common. It's very oh, common. It's awful. Yeah, it's really, it's I, I, you feel sorry for them, and, and it happens all too often. It does. You, you know, as long as the beginner realizes, listen, pick up. You don't have to hit every single one of your two hundred and seventy-five shots. Right. Correct. Okay. Correct. Have a bit of fun. Like the group in front of us this morning. Like the oh, oh god. Oh. But I mean, once once you're on your like seventh or eighth shot, it's like, bro, it doesn't matter. Just pick it's up good. Pick ball. it up. Yeah, yeah. We're well, done. One fifty out. It's good. Yeah, yeah. we're we, done. We watched that this morning. And, yeah, you and hit two out of bounds. It, we don't need to hit another one. To answer your question, John, I think all of us would take mid level. Take mid- the mid levels. Two sure. mid level over yeah. a really yeah. good hundred really percent. Unless the really good player goes, I'll go and take care of him. Yeah, some, yeah. He's, he's I, a, I can, I can take care of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Make him happy. Uh, next question is from a Peter Sugar. Peter Sugar, Peter very, Sugar. Su- very sweet. Like S U G A R. Aye, the thing you love, Zabo. Mm. Who doesn't love? By Peter the way, Sugar? for the listeners, uh, the pe- a couple of the guys <laughs> we're carrying for this week are kind of nutritionists. This is my wife. They're health coaches. Time health coaches. Is part, part of it. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, health coach as well, yeah. one of them try to get Zabo off the sugar. Yeah. Good luck with that, folks. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a good reset. Do a, do a two-week reset. I'm telling you. I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna start small. I'm going to cut back and then... Uh, He's sitting with a bottle of Coke <laughs> and an orange juice right now. That's a good point. <laughs> He's got That's concentrated funny. sugar and natural well, sugar sitting right in front of him. Keep your eyes in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Peter Sugar, good name, uh, Pete. He's from Pine Bluff in... North Ar- Carolina. No, oh. Arkansas. No, it's... Arkansas. Arkansas. This here's Arkansas. Arkansas down here. Or. So he says, my mates love going to Top Golf. Ah. However, is it really golf? Your thoughts? Well, if you'd asked me that a few years ago, I'd have said no, absolutely not. Now, having said that with the statistics I just threw out there a little while ago, there's around 12 million golfers in the United States that don't really play golf on a golf course very often, very little or not at all. So... We are actually in the industry, Big G. We are actually tracking golfers mm-hmm. on non golf courses, so they're participating in the game. Yeah, are yeah. they playing a round of golf by rule or definition? No, but are they participating, contributing to the game of golf? Yeah, they are. You can cons- I consider it golf. Yeah, it's golf. I mean, you're hitting the golf ball. You're not golfing, but it's part of golf. Yes, but you're not golfing. I mean, you're you're hitting a golf ball. Golf, the golf course, is. Like a hole in one at a normal golf course. <sighs> Top golf mm. is like getting a hole in one on a par three course. Oh, here we go. So it always not, comes back to it's that. It's not real golf, but it's participation. I was at Top Golf last week out there. It was interesting to watch. How good are you ever going to become? You're, you're 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 bringing people to the game who would never ever go to a golf golf course or a driving range. It's maybe bringing people to the game that would never touch a golf club. It's exactly right, and that's and that's growth. But so let's just say. Let's take let's take a thousand people that have never played golf and take them to a top golf, right? Thousand people never played golf before, never touched golf, take them to golf. They're gonna have a blast. There's no consequence. There's no there's not really an intimidation factor. It's fun. It's a bowling alley, multi level bowling alley for golf. Exactly. Right? It's really easy to enjoy. If we convert ten percent of those to the golf course. Thomas is all about the numbers, Zabo. Yeah. I yeah. tell you what, he right. sits at night thinking about numbers. 10% of those oh, hey, the golf tag. A lot of opportunity, yeah, yeah. Lot of opportunity <laughs> for the growth yeah, yeah. of this He's game. I'm excited about his fingers. This. Oh, big time. <laughs> I'm excited about the growth of this game. I, in, in, you know, COVID was horrible. The pandemic was awful. Having said that, it was great for golf. It was great for cycling. It was great for pickleball. Pickleball. What the heck? Pickleball. F- yeah. Pickleball, right? It's huge. But golf, I mean, golf boomed. When I, when I first came on board with the company 15 years ago, almost 16 years ago now, uh, there was 20 million golfers in the United States. There's 41.1 million golfers in the United States right now. Now, if they're identifying as a golfer, 
not to bring that into play, uh, <laughs> as, uh, by indoor or driving range, welcome to the game. And I and I I hope that you get uh, become brave enough uh, to take it to the golf course, and I hope you fall in love with it because it's an amazing game. It, when you talk about identifying, obviously, lots of other sports have dudes that are competing against the women. Unfortunately, the swimming last year, you have track and field, you know, athletics as we call it back home. Do you see that happening in golf? Yeah, I think somebody pushing them. There actually, well, there is actually, there is somebody. Yeah, you're There's, talking Caitlyn Jenner down at Sherwood? No, no, <laughs> no. What, Caitlyn has a locker in the ladies' locker room. Have a picture of it. Um, picture of what? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, exactly. Easy now. No, easy there, is, now. There, is somebody, uh, there is somebody that's attempting to transition to female and play on the, uh, in, in the, in the ladies' circuit. There good. actually is somebody doing that. Well, yeah. well, good, good luck to them because th- th- that's going to be a tough ask because... I think it's one sport where I mean that's it's just absurd. Well, you can't still a do skill. it. I mean, I mean, it's, it costs so damn. You'd have thought that about you'd have thought that about swimming though. Always. That's true. Know. That's true. It's it in any sport. It's just it's unfair. It's unfair and ridiculous. Right, boys. We need to get onto mentions. Notable mentions. Zabel, what you got? I got to shout out all my AT and T peeps this year: Larry Fitzgerald, Kevin Streelman, Webb Simpson, who was class act by the Webb Simpson, great dude. His caddy Paul Tesori, and then also uh, Nate Bargetzi, who I didn't even, you know, honestly, I'd never heard of Nate Bargetzi, but he's actually a pretty funny comedian, great dude, and his brother caddy for him too. Derek, got to shout them out. Also, got to give a big shout out to. Uh, Jim and Gene Atwell, my my in laws. Jim went back to school. My father in law. You probably heard the call nine one one episode. Oh yeah, Thomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost that. He's back teaching elementary school. He's a substitute no teacher kidding. at elementary school. How about Crazy. that? So That's good awesome. for you, Jim. That's awesome. Thomas, who you got? Uh, shout out to my team I brought up here this week. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming up. The two of them are uh, are virgins on the uh, peninsula, mm-hmm. which is fantastic. They're having the time of their lives. It's awesome. So my my boys. Uh, DH and D Dub and uh, JB, uh, thanks for coming up. And then I got to give a shout out. You know the reason I'll be able to actually come up here and enjoy myself. Uh, you know my my team back in Scottsdale, my golf tech team back there, my leadership back there, uh, my my leadership team back there that I left behind are, are taking care of things for me. Only one person's text me, Antonio. Oh God, I'm going to kill you. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All your uh, employees. <laughs> but, yeah, right. So yeah, I'd like to I'd like to thank the golf tech team uh, for holding it down back there and give me the peace of mind, build, take a week off, and come here and spend some time with you guys. And That's I got a shout out. Before you do your shots, I got to shout right. out Thomas. It's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Pleasure. And if you're in Scott, Scottsdale and need a great coach, Thomas is your, he's he's a great coach. He's actually shown me a few things yeah. about my. Where, golf where's school. Golf Tech located? Uh, my office is on Pinnacle Peak and Pima in North Scottsdale. Perfect. Look him up, Thomas Perfect. Howell. And on Instagram, do you do any of that stuff? I do not. <laughs> okay, okay, I do not. You can simply go to golftech.com and uh, put in the zip code North Scottsdale, and uh, my somewhat pretty face will pop up and smile at you. Perfect. There you go. It might might be worth coming to do a video there at some point to show uh, listeners and yeah, you're our YouTube set channel all the, the, the setup and how it works. My shout outs, quite a few. I'll quickly go through it. Mostly to do with last week. Mark Turner, who lives in Gilbert, and his mate Chris. They took took great care of me last week. Ron Wilson and and, and Rich Lesniak. You will hear more about from them. They were part of the reason I was out there, boys. Thank you for for taking care of me. We Dougie, we Dougie Wrights and his wife Paula. And then his uh, his business partner, Heller Goodman, they are from the True Capital Management. And Dougie's going to come on the podcast at some point talking about, like, sports agency. Cool. Oh, yeah. So That'd be they've really signed cool. up. Yeah, they, they do a lot of Look that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, Hilo, who I went to the, the golf with on, on Friday, he's going to do a podcast with us, or an episode, should I say. Jimmy Hughes uh, also bumped into Mark Vazana today on the golf course. He He's a big listener to the podcast, and we, Neil, and Matty D were caddying for him. And he'd sent me a message to say he was coming out to play in the same event. So, Mark, thanks for listening and hope you had a great week. Also, Ryan Bal- Balenji, right? Ryan runs a thing called uh, GNN, which is thegolfnewsnet.com. So, thegolfnewsnet.com. And recently, Ryan added the Real Life Carry podcast to the radio nice. section on the oh, website. That's really cool. So we picked up some new listeners on there. Great. So hello to them and many thanks, Ryan. If you are a golf pervert like many of you are, mm. definitely get out and check out thegolfnewsnet.com. Thomas, many thanks for your help, mate. Really enjoyed that. Thank yeah. you, Thomas. I look forward to having Enjoy you the week. again Enjoy being here. in the future and we'll, we'll t- hit you up for some tips. Yeah, hit me up some, some tips. Uh, yeah, shoot me some emails, shoot me some questions. I'll uh, 
provide your best response as I possibly can. And Excellent. You know, if the question is stupid, I'll just say, oh. uh, yeah, you will. I, you can definitely guarantee you will tell us that. <laughs> Zabo, thank you as always for your time. Of course, thank you. And to our listeners, many thanks for listening. Thanks for the continued support. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, podcast at glorifieddonkey.com. Until the next time, thanks for listening and enjoy your golf. Thank you.